through. And the kids on the floor are the wise old souls. They've already done that piece of work or something like it. And they, they, they know what feedback to give him. He's only part way through. So he can take on board their wisdom. And the girl over here is probably the only reliable person in the class. So she's taking a picture of this moment of the class's learning journey. And the mantra in the school is, tough on the content, easy on the author. So let's look at what they're saying to each other. It's pretty powerful. Um, I'll blow that up a bit. Can you see that text on the back? Can you see that text on the back? Is that? No. Uh, oh, uh, I hate being read to from the screen, but I'll just pull a couple of bits out. So they're saying to their classmate, um, it works crap, basically. <laughs> Sort it out. I mean, they're saying, look, you know, the technical terms are not very good, it's all in dot points, the structure is probably in D. So they're being pretty rough, but, you know, they're saying so far you've got a D plus, and then look, there's a little sort of, you know, D plus balance, look, Melanie, love you, you know, sweetness and light. So it works crap, I'm your friend, sort it out. Kids are fabulously powerful. That's supporting each other. And that, that works right down to look at these little children where the marking on the books, you know, is from little tiny ankle biters in a, in a primary school. And if we take, um, if we look at it in a little bit more detail, this is a lovely example, really. You can see here, this is, this is again on, on my iPad in Portland. Um, this lad here is leading the little, this little tiny fella here. He's helping him with his technology, and look at how maturely he's doing it. I just zoom in on his hands for you. Uh, you can see that he's folded his thumbs into it. He doesn't have his thumbs sawn off. He's guiding the saw, but the little lad is holding the wood and is holding the saw. An interesting contrast with the teacher behind. I know the teacher behind. She is an outstanding and excellent supporter of children's learning, but. Look at what she's doing, her arms around the child, she's holding the wind, she's holding the saw. Now, this is hugely indicative of what we're talking about with big data. You know, we don't want to hold their hands, hold their saw, we give them the capability to make their learning better, give them the information to build better learning support, just as we've done in the health service. You go to your doctor these days, he doesn't keep all your health secret from you, he tells you a few things, you go off and sort it out, you measure your own um, blood pressure, you measure your own heart rate, you measure everything really. He's your consultant, you're the researcher, you get on with it. So this is pretty exciting times, I think. I'll play you a little clip here from a group of children um, down there. Uh, and then in Portland, um, We've got children working with Sunseeker, we're trying to create employment on the island, so our kids are working here. Sunseeker has this wonderful glamorous coats that James Bond is always falling off in moments of excitement. You know? And uh, this is a child in the first year of his BTEC work, which is built in Sunseeker. He's building, he's actually building boats of the waste material left over the Sunseeker. Just want you to hear his voice as he talks about how he took the, the kids took over the learning, redesigned it, restructured the. Well, I'll let them speak. Here we go. So you have these big sort of immersion days. Where did that idea come from? Um, well, it was our idea um, that we came up with instead of spending um, little bits of time doing little bits of work, we decided, um, all the kids decided to spend one day of school every few weeks and split some of the work, get it all out of the way. Um, that way we don't have to waste. Um, time doing this sort of stuff. Perfect, yeah. and that really, and that was your idea, I think. Yeah, we, we all kind of said, we have one 15 minute lesson a week, and we all kind of said, it just wasn't enough time to get the folder work done. So we spoke about it, at one break time, and then we suggested it to Sir, um, and he got us And so on, I mean, you can hear, you know, they looked at it, it's not working, we really want to blitz it, we want immersion, and the focus of time, then we want to get back to this thing. as a direct result of all that and you know it's just a nice little um, articulation of all that. Okay, um, sometimes that can work in other ways too. Here's uh, 
if you're children in Australia who are having surveyed themselves, their data was about their exposure to letters and to numbers. And they found very little exposure at home. So their solution has been, this is again Mark Oliphant College, to fill the school with letters, with numbers, with number trees. If I go to um, any pillar in the school, challenges me with how tall I am. If I go to building nine, it doesn't say building nine, it says square root 81, work it out, work it out for yourself, you know, good luck. So the whole school becomes, you know, a maths puzzle, the whole school becomes a numeracy challenge, and you'll find that in schools all around the world, that was fun in Spain as well, you know. So the kids survey what's missing in their learning lives and inject it into their own stuff. This is hugely exciting and for me very motivating. Let's I want to leave a couple of minutes of questions, so I'm just going to go to two places. One is here, just to remind you that this is happening all around the world. You can just see what it says on these girls' shirt, researcher. So, you know, all around the world, we're unleashing children on making their learning better. And of course, of course, it's hugely effective. And um, just as we go to questions, I think probably I'm just going to leave this on the wall. Um, it's just Oh no, it wasn't what I meant to do. Too big a So I'm going to leave this on the wall, which is a lovely little thing from um, from Denmark, um, helping rebuild the education system around Silverborg. And we worry in this country a lot about safety, a lot about danger. Uh, in Denmark, danger and safety go hand in hand. Children do dangerous things to learn how to do them safely. So with big data, I think people sometimes say, "Oh, you guys shouldn't let the children lose on all that." What might go wrong? And I'm saying, just like when I arrived at this school and found the children halfway across the main road up a tree, you know, so what actually you get from this is literate, wise, sensible kids who make good judgments. So let's go to, I think we've got time for four quick questions. And then, uh, and then if you want to know more, come to the stand and talk to the kids. Uh, do we have a roving mic? How are we going to do this? Yeah, we do. We have a couple of roving mics. So please, hands up if you'd like to ask a question. Or if you want to tweet me at hashtag better reader, I can pick it up and I can ask Stephen. Who would like to go first? You've done your job incredibly well, Stephen. Nobody has any questions at all. There you go, I knew there'd be one. There's a microphone coming to you straight away. There you go. Microphone coming to you. And just hold it right on your chin so we can hear you. Thank you. Hi. I guess we can hear you, right? We can. Yeah, really well, yeah. In terms of uh, big data, it's really fascinating. We know that stuff, we know the nutritional information, we haven't given it to our children. 
Well, what happened at Port, really interestingly, was this time round with the GCSEs, every kid was given a cooked breakfast and a bottle of water on their desk, and that was part of a fourfold increase in exam results of extraordinary group. But we don't need to do that for the kids. We need to arm them with the knowledge. This is what you eat. You want to be a you want to be an Olympian mathematician, this is what you eat. They would be different for a multiple choice test to an essay, wouldn't it? You know, you know that, we arm the kids with that, they'll do astonishing stuff. Because you above all else as an audience have seen what happened in technology in technology when we asked the question to the kids, what would you do? We didn't co-construct, we stood back and let them lead learning. I'm just saying, actually, what we prototyped with technology and learning turns out to work across a whole flipping board. That's probably a good place to stop, isn't it? Thank you very much for the question. I now know why my A-level grades are so bad I didn't have a cooked breakfast for eight months. Well, that's a whole thing to do that. Um, that's what you're saying. We're going to microphone to you. It is interesting, though, isn't it, how little we add all the information we have from other arenas into the education arena. We just leave it to get on by itself. <laughs> the cognitive science, you know, we, we know so much about how to remember things. You know, go and Google space learning or one of a dozen different, uh, you know, models for memorising things effectively. But we don't do any of that with the kids. You know, we just leave them entirely blank and then, and then worry about grade information if they get better. It's nonsense. So go ahead. Paul Waring from Margo. You mentioned the redundancy that you saw in the media centre in the Olympics. Do you see the same sort of redundancy in much of what you see in the education sector in terms of the way delivery is going to be um, um, No, but I do see, I do see uh, a, a change, if you like. Um, let me just throw this um, up on the screen if I've got to the right place. So I'll run this, I'll run this side in the background, but yeah, of course, the role, the role of the teacher, but the role of the, you know, you've heard people standing out here whittling on about the stage on the stage and all sorts of trite stuff, but the reality is our role as a learning professional is as a learning professional, you know, and that means, I think, we need to immerse ourselves in the detail of what learning looks like, and I don't begin to see how we can do that without the proper flow of information from our students, and they're all, all of them are different, you know, I'm fat, you're thin, these tall, you know, we're all very different. And I don't, I don't really need to debate about learning styles and learning intelligences or other stuff. This is just kids learning to do what they need to do and us helping them to do it with better data. And our role is, you know, this is this is um, the um, Academy of Hall that we were talking about earlier. And I just want you to look at how self-managing the children are, how organised they are, how they're sitting in groups doing different tasks. And ask you the question, how many teachers have you seen at this point? We haven't changed the ratio of teachers to children at all, but the role is completely different. Maybe different. And it's a nicer role, and it's an easier role, and it's less work for teachers. What's not to learn? Thank you very much, Pete. Um, time for one more question. The gentleman just there, if we can get a microphone to you. Um, Definitely. Uh, it's a very quick question, but I have a long answer to it, but hopefully we'll be nice and quick. Um, I want to know your views in terms of big data um, regarding uh, child safeguarding and um, kind of data protection, because so I think that's quite a big thing in, look, in terms of what you're talking about. Uh, There's kind of information flowing, um, the children having ownership of it, but how is this going to kind of be monitored and, and you know, in your views? I mean, I do think we've made some errors with, with safety and child protection, and, and you know, I'm reasonably militant about this, so I'll tell it as I believe it. You know, I, I don't believe that keeping children away from things within the school that we know they're going to be exposed to outside of the school keeps anybody safe apart from us. So it doesn't keep the kids safe. You know, if we were trying to teach water safety, we wouldn't keep them away from water until they're 16 and then throw them off the pier. You know, we would work with them. And all that, and you'll know from my website, I'm a passionate believer in kids just as they do in, uh, in Tallinn at the moment, kids having smartphones before they even start school, so they can build those taxonomies of understanding of the different role of different media, just like we give them crayons and everything else. And you have to do that, you know, there is no, no cognitive way other than doing it. Yeah, I believe the same thing applies 
with the data. These are very young children. The kids I showed you with the reading scheme that starts at five. You know, and they don't they don't get angry with each other about their data, they get supportive. You know, they reach out and say, I mean if I sorry this this is a short little answer, but you know, if I was just to jump to um, you know to kids working on those writable surfaces, you know, kids writing on walls we were talking about earlier. Uh, you know, they're doing their coursework. You know, if I'm doing my class work on a wall, everybody can see what I'm doing. They can step in and help. If I'm having a bit of a lazy day, I'm just standing in front of a blank wall. I feel a bit of a burn, to be honest. You know, if I need help, somebody will see that quickly and come over. In the secrecy of my exercise book, you know, I'm safe to fail in the privacy of my own book, and kids do fail and they do get lost. So there's something about collegiality and mutuality and support is absolutely fundamental and there is no too early for that to start. Really, really important. And you, you know I'm chairing up this advisory group on uh, uh, technology policy for the government as of yesterday was announced and you know you can the bottom dollar that view will be in there, of course. So uh, thank you for the question. Sorry we have to end the session there. You are available at the Heppel.net stand.